my Tupac Shakur. He has all the tattoos that he actually has. He has the 50 NIG word. He has the wife. But the music industry is a secret society and the music industry's job is to do what? Promote and propagate the images that are most advantageous for the power structure to use in order to facilitate its agenda. If we want black men in jail and dead, we need black rappers to promote a constant message of destruction and degeneracy. Every rap video has elements in it. Killing black people, using women, smoking weed, selling dope, and worshiping materialism. Every rap video. The lyrics might be different, the beat might be different, but the five elements of destruction are there present in every single rap video made except for the conscious rap. I think music just changed my life as a whole. When I'm in a bad situation, and this isn't a joke, it's like, what would Tupac do? Today we have all come together to join forces to address the issue of violence in the nation. A violence which has decimated our communities, devastated our families, and destroyed the souls of so many of our youth. Have grown more violent and depraved. I've said from the beginning that this music is drug driven, greed driven, and violence driven. Rap music. Rap music. Thanks to rap songs that debase women. Degrades the value of life. Me as a black woman still calling us hoes, bitches, and sluts. It's calling us niggers. And now it's also defaming our faith. We are driven by hip hop. And you gotta realize that everything that we do, the culture, the atmosphere is driven by hip hop. They control it. That is the dominant favorite among African American males. Is a big favorite among young white suburban males. We don't control what's driving the black community. They do. They do. They do. Picture perfect. I paint a picture. Bomb the hoochies with precision. Ain't nothing but a gangster party. Making money off a record that is suggesting it's okay to kill cops, and that is wrong. Also coming in for heavy criticism lately, the lyrics in some, not all, but some, rap music. As correspondent Bill Whitaker reports, The group's name itself is controversial. Niggers with Attitude, known as NWA, has taunted law enforcement with its lyrics urging violence against police. You know, when you go back and you look at the type of music that black people had out, you know, before hip-hop, look at the kind of music. It makes you really wonder why would you put out gangster rap. When you see the interviews of Jerry Heller and you know Dr. Dre and them now talking about what happened back then, Jerry Heller's talking about how he went to Capitol Records and went to these other labels, and they basically was like, "You can't put this stuff out." You know, then he went to Priority, and Priority Records was you know accepted him and this and that. And how when N.W.A. shot the video, you know, straight out of Compton, sent it to MTV, MTV was like, "Hell no, we're not playing this." Now you gotta remember, a lot of people don't realize that whole thing was a publicity stunt to get African Americans to accept this gangster rap because contrary to what you may believe, I know it's hard to believe, you had people out there who was really against black people who was totally against this gangster rap because they can see what it was. 
So they had to bring us in on it. Do you honestly think if NWA would have just came this music? I mean, it just bam, it's on all the radios, on the uh, TV, the video, and they're talking about murder, killer, drugs, this and that. Black people would have stepped back and said, Oh, you tripping. They're going to think that's all of us. They're going to think there's something wrong with us. You can't put this music out. We would have protested it, and we did protest it. This is what you don't see. WPGC. An anti rap backlash is spreading. WPGC in Washington, D.C. dropped violent or demeaning lyrics three years ago. Last month, KACE in Los Angeles followed suit. This week, WBLS in New York City. It's in pop music, it's in rock music, it's everywhere now. It's, 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 an, it's an epidemic of, of bad news for our communities around the country. Support everything that's positive that's going on in the community. Stop the violence, right. a grassroots watchdog group in Los Angeles pressed KPWR to rein in rap as a public service. It's just crazy when you see a four, five, six-year-old child walking down the street um, echoing uh, inward, nigga, bitch, hoe, uh, killing somebody, this or that, and they can't even say their ABCs. We did protest this music, but when you have Jerry Heller, when you have the story of NWA out there the way that it is, it changes the perception. So when you look back at it, you see that they're saying that the label said no, and then right after MTV said no, we're not going to play your music video, how come it was on the news. How come that made headlines that MTV turned down gangster rap uh, group NWA's music video? Well, I'll put that out there. If they really didn't want people to know about gangster rap or hip hop, if they didn't want to spread it, you most certainly don't put it on national news. You don't put it on TV so people can look at it and say, well, how come they don't want these black people to pay, play their black music on MTV? What's up with that? We remember they didn't want to play Michael Jackson. So that's something to stimulate black people and say, okay, now I want to play another black group. What's up? What's wrong with their music? And get us to rally behind NWA. Then you look at all of the interviews that followed it. As I said, these are the same companies that own the labels. So you got to peep the track. You see this chamber right there? It's no bullshit. Surreal, surreal. Nine millimeters in your ass. Nine millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta carry these or you get fucked up on the street. So you gotta be prepared. And this got infrared scope on it. You put the dot on your target and you blow this shit out the motherfucker. No joke. Zap. Okay, now, in your, your records, you know. Everybody grew up in the street. Killings, robbery. Murder, uh, thieving, and everything. The whole nine yards. Dope dealing, everything. Everything you hear on our records is true. Yeah, we figure you can't, you can't rap about nothing you don't know nothing about. All these news companies down there interviewing NWA. And NWA on TV saying the right thing. They saying, oh, well, you know, we're just trying to talk about what really goes on. We're just trying to give people the truth about the black neighborhood. It's not gangster rap, it's not uh, promoting drugs, it's not promoting violence, which it was, of course, to keep it real. But it's just we trying to get our voice out, we're trying to be heard. And what happens? You get black people saying, yeah, let the niggas be heard. They trying to stop something that we doing. See, they understand us. They got us figured out. They knew what would stimulate us, what would get us to rally behind gangster rap. And that's what it was. You had a bunch of people telling us that we can't do something as black people. So you have black people listening to this music. First of all, as I just told you, it bypasses all of the defenses of your brain. So automatically when you hear this music and you get this stimulation, and then the beat is bumping and it sounds good, automatically you're going to like it. But when you examine the content, you can't in a conscious mind say that it's good. But that's what's happening and we're not understanding that. that in our conscious state, we're not seeing you know, what it is. You have to be strong and have some kind of control over your brain to really analyze this, you know, these lyrics, this content, and say, hey, something is wrong with this, and it shouldn't be played, and we should have said that from the jump. But they got to sucker into the whole black versus white thing, as they knew that would happen. And Jerry Heller was smart and doing it like this. They even came out and said, I think it was the president or the CEO of Priority Records, came out and said himself, the whole thing was a publicity stunt. He said it. I think in uh, the documentary that Chris Rock narrated, he says it in that. He says that it's a publicity stunt to basically 
bring hip hop in. And that's what it was. You wasn't going to get us to accept it. But telling us we can't have something make us want it even more. And that's what it was. That's an old trick. Tell somebody they can't have something and then we automatically want it. And that's what happened. So you remember that, you know, that was like 1988 when it came out. 1989, you know, MTV finally plays NWA and we see him in your MTV raps and they put out um, Express Yourself. And that's another video, another song that's deceptive. That gets you to think that, okay, well, they're just expressing themselves. What's wrong with expressing yourself? You know, First Amendment rights. Some rap artists call this an infringement on their right to free speech. Critics say the artists have a right to say whatever they want, but others also have the right not to hear it. Instead of continuously exposing our youth to negative media that distorts their images of male-female relationships, that undermines the stability of our families, communities, and nation by encouraging violence, abuse, and sexism as acceptable behaviors, and perpetuates the cycle of low self-esteem of African-American youth. Thus, images that degrade our dignity and are an insult to our children, our families, and communities concern us too. And that includes all this gangster rap and misogynist lyrics. Damn, rap music, I hate Bob that. Doe. It's just so violent. It, it destroys like everybody. It, it makes the kids crazy. The, the kids kill people. They're cop haters. They're going against society. I don't understand the music. It's too loud. It's too rowdy. It's too violent. Let's ban all rap Outlaws. music. Ban Tupac. Ban the outlaw immortals. Ban them. Ban them. Ban them. Black people to accept this music that's destroying us, this gangster music. You know, it's a weapon that's destroying the black community. And they was really, really brilliant at implementing their plan. And we had no clue what they was trying to do. And we just went with the flow. It's giving us music not to stimulate us, but to basically dumb us down and to basically, you know, keep our minds off of things that actually matter. Let's keep it real. Now, a lot of people enjoy, you know, gangster rap or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And personally, you know, when you upset, when you mad about something and you put on that right hip hop track, for some people, it, you know, it calms you down. But for, you know, most people, it fuels that anger. Like if you get upset and you put on like, you know, that right record, you know, you put on like Tupac Hellraiser, that joint might, it's going to make you even madder. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fuel that anger. It might cause you to do something that, you know, you don't want to do. And, you know, that's the purpose of this music to fuel angry black people to add on to the violence in the black community can't one minute promote peace you know and treat women good and then the next minute promote violence and treat women like shit and talk about women you know in a derogatory manner so this is this is the trickery of hip-hop and the industry how they can play off you know things they can deceive you and make you think an artist is okay and cool but on the next minute you know you find that you know they contradict themselves. This is one of the issues that a lot of people have with artists like Tupac, you know. He put out a song called, you know, uh, Keep Your Head Up, talking to the women, but then he put out another song that's, you know, denigrating the women. This is the industry, this is how they play, but really it's to trick you and to fool you into thinking that these artists are just, you know, it's just music, there's nothing to it, it's just music. Remember the video Express Yourself, how they showed the, uh, you know, the slave master on the horse on the plantation, you know, basically harassing the slaves. And then it shows, you know, that time when cops are on police horses, harassing black people in the black community. So it was kind of sh kind of trying to show this whole comparison between slavery and today and how nothing has changed. And that, again, was fueling people even more to say, you know what, this hip hop is real, it's telling the truth, it's telling, it's telling our story. And they got people, you know, for the first time on a huge scale because now you had this song on MTV. And we thought that we was actually, you know, using this music as a weapon to tell our story, not realizing that, wait a minute, the platform in which we are using, we don't own, they own. 
So how can we, we be trying to tell the white man about their problems or what they've done to us? And we're using their platform, we're using their tools, we're using their stuff to put out our message, not thinking that this could possibly be a trap. And a lot of people didn't realize that. A lot of people fell into the whole perception. So when you listen to NWA, you we listen to the music from that time, it's almost like you know, NWA foreshadowed, like they predicted the LA riots, like they predicted, you know, they were saying that, you know, this stuff happens, police brutality, and they beat people, and this and that, this is what goes on, and then Rodney King gets beat. Police want to get violent with us, we'll get violent with them, because I'm ready to die. Prince and Normandy, right about four o'clock this afternoon, this started out as a report of two just left and found this. The looting and violence were widespread, and that is officers from their cars and beaten near the intersection of Florence and Normandy. At one point, two cars collided trying to race through that. A lot of people can't fathom that maybe the um, Rodney King beating was a setup, that the whole thing was planned. A lot of people can't fathom that until you really go back and you start to examine the whole thing. When you look at the story, you know, it's where that his name is Rodney King. You know, last thing, King, something that black people can relate to that last name, you know, thinking about Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King. And it's something that black people could just, you know, it'll stimulate something in us to say, we, you know, what's going on? They beating up a man and black man named King and we tired of police, uh, police brutality. And then black people can say, see, we told you, you know, the music was, was talking about it. We told y'all this is how it is, you know, and then a riot started. You can see that it's like they knew. It's like they prepared for it. They knew this was going to happen. They knew it was going to be some kind of riots. And it's something that this news anchor uh, pointed out on the news. They obviously have thought about this. They anticipated this. They, meaning the LAPD, they obviously have plans to deal with it. And uh, as we said before, they've allocated a million dollars to overtime in case things like this happen. So they are obviously carrying out a pre-thought uh, uh, out plan. You know, hip hop is a weapon that has been deployed against us years ago. It has destroyed the black community and it has made us think that we are something that we are not. We are not this culture. It's not our culture. It's not something you should be proud of. It's something that you should be trying to escape from. Is there any Dr. Dre beat or any Daz Dillinger beat that could that gets confused for Dr. Dre beat a lot. No, I did Ain't No Fun. I did uh, slew of songs, rat a tat tat I mean, you know, a bunch of songs. I probably just got program drum, programming, something like that on there. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was a clobbering game back then. Mike, 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 Mike. Take, 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 take. I was like, he's like, I heard you real nice on the pianos. I played piano for him and he said, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> you made the track for Jen and Juice. Uh, my homeboy Emmanuel, Dean. You know what I mean? He played all the keyboards and all the melodies. And, you know what I mean? And Dr. Dre, he came up with the drum, but he should have gave him some credit similar. What other song did he What's do? What's my name? All that, mm, 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 all that shit, you know what I mean? All that keyboard shit, that's Emmanuel. He was young, we was young, you know what I mean? And so one thing I always uh, see about you is you always give Dr. Dre his props. Like, no matter what, I'm talking about the hider, 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 you know, you know. Ain't nobody better than Dr. Dre, man. And, and that's what you think? You think that's the, that's, <laughs> man, I, I can, I can research, look in your bro. face and can tell you mean that. Like, like I, I can on, tell. But on a producer level, what is it exactly Don't eat, don't eat. People be trying to be, I be like, yeah, Doc, don't you do it. That's like, that's like you can't put. Like you, you battle switch. You can't would you, put would you battle Obi-Wan Kenobi. But there's different that. levels of why Dre is dope. No, it is, you, it is, I'm still trying to, I just know he's just super dope. And <laughs> certain things, I still, I still be studying. Let's make some noise for that, guys. I'll be trying to make some noise for that. <laughs> Damn, how you get that kick to sound like that? You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs>
started this gangsta shit. Fucking thanks, I get. I started this gangsta shit. You want to really have some conversations about what adult Joe thinks you've brought to this game? <laughs> How far do we want to take these hot takes? I think I could go to court and make a valid argument that you was the first plant. I'm not going to do that. Hmm. But talk about all you've brought to the game. <laughs> you brought a lot more niggas than that. But all of them ain't nice. Yeah. I don't know. Zans. Uh, no. No? I mean, yes, Lean. Yes, a lot of Lean. The lowest tuck to use a motherfucker. Instead of trying to help a nigga, you destroy your brother. Worse than the others. Have you been disappointed that there have not been more members of the African American community, particularly leaders in the African American community, who've been willing to be on the front lines with you about rap music? That has just, you know, that has hurt me more than all that white folks have done to me. You know, that has hurt me more because our people don't really understand uh, the effect that this is going to have on our people. Um, because we're going to be gone, those of us who've been the fighters. And I'm glad you're recording this history. Because all of us are going to be gone. And the kids, that's why they're recording it, all this music. That's all our kids will be hearing in 2020, 25 and 30 and 40, 2040 and 50, and they'll have to start fighting. Those who are knowledgeable now will have to start the whole civil rights movement again. Those who fail to learn the lessons of history are what? Doomed to repeat them. <laughs>